impart education but also to inculcate discipline and qualities in the students. So students are advised to follow strict discipline as long as they are in the campus. You should feel protected and shielded under the guidance of our teachers. Hence, you should honor the presence. Finally, I would like to advise you to become an extraordinary in every respect. Whatever you do, do it with all heart and achieve excellence. Real journey of your future begins from here. I wish you all the best and good luck for all your future endeavors. Now, before I wind up, I'll just like to quote Swami, what Swami Vivekananda has said. We are responsible for what we are and whatever we wish ourselves to be. We have the power to make ourselves. Thank you. Now, I'd like to request our principal sir to address the gathering. Good afternoon, one and all. Good afternoon, one and all. <laughs> Morning, we had a same session for CSC department as well as EC department. Dignitaries on the dash, today Chief Guest Sri Madhusudan Yirada, co-founder of Radius Technologies, guest of honor Sri Ajaj Khan, founder and director of Talent Youth Solutions Project in Gate. Beloved, our beloved secretary and correspondent Sri Krishna Rao sir, Director Infrastructure Sri Rakesh Reddy sir, Sri Pradeep Reddy Garu, Dr. Lakshmi Pati Rao sir, Director NCET, Professor Venkateshwar, Dean Examinations, and Dr. Anuradha HOD HNS, dear HOD, our wedding engineers, parents, my colleagues, media people, and press reporters. Once again, good afternoon, one and all. At the outset, I should congratulate all the students here who have taken who have taken admission here at our institute, our institute, and this is a very right choice made by the students. In addition to that, I welcome them all and into our Methodist family. So I assure you that your Kids are in very safe hands of our faculty and with us, with our management. And you need not you need not worry about that. In addition to that, but at least once in a 15 days or once in a month, the parent has to inquire about the student progress, their attendance and internal marks and all that. I request all the parents to visit at least once in a fortnight or a month to the concerned HOD or to the department. And uh, the methodology in intermediate colleges, learning concept of intermediate colleges, it will be different than in professional engineering colleges. Obviously, intermediate colleges, which was like a just a school field, but here it won't be like. You have to put your efforts where we have got a very good library. In addition to that, we have got a teaching highly qualified, experienced teaching professionals are there. So you have to make use of them because you are, you are going to stay with us only from 9.30 to 4.50 that hour. Later on, <coughs> the parents also is the responsibility of the parents to take care of them. So in addition to that, I will highlight our Methodist College of Engineering and Technology. Let me brief about it. So it is an all minority education institution established in the year 2008 under the leadership of 3K Crystal House. It is spread over five acres of sprawling campus. All these beautiful buildings were created by our director, Sri Rakesh Reddy sir. And our institute has constantly striving to achieve excellence in technical education and success of its programs are evaluated using highest standards of quality, innovation and visibility. During 2021, the year 2021 was really an order set for our institute, wherein we got a NAC accreditation with a A plus grade with a CGP of 3.32. Then later, wherein all engineering courses have been accredited by National Board of Accreditation, that is NBA. Later again, in the month of August 2021, our college became autonomous by University Grant Commission. 
this advance, we got it for 10 years. So we offer, our institute offers six engineering courses, civil, computer science and engineering, AITS, EC, EEE and mechanical engineering. Apart from PG courses like ME in CAD-CAM specialization and MBA in business management for 16 years. Total intake of our distribution is 618. And we have a research center which is affiliated to Osman University, which is under mechanical engineering department. So as you are aware that we already got an autonomous, the rules for the autonomous are different. Anyway, that you will come across in the next induction sessions. So autonomous means wherein this curriculum development, more courses and restructuring can be done. In addition to that assessment, examination, whole system will be with the university, with the college, but under the supervision of university nominee and UGC nominee. So we will be guided by the UGC directly and university nominees. So we can promote our, we can have a modern tools for taking this classwork, not, not a, a normal blackboard teaching which will not do it. We are going to have Technical tools, we can have an advanced tools to implement our teaching learning processes like ICT tools and all like. In addition to that, we promote healthy practices like uh, community services, extension services like NSS and all like. So only, I want to just highlight here, the duration of the course is four years. We are within a span of a six years maximum. Six years you have to complete. That means Four years is the normal duration. Worst case, you can extend up to six, six years. But see to it that once if you have a backlog in the first year, that becomes a convenience for the second year now. Please try to complete the course within a given time of four years only. In addition to that, the attendance is mandatory for all the semesters. Then you need to have 75% attendance. So you need to have a 75% attendance. So parents, I request all, the, I, I, I appeal all the parents to be more cautious about this. So please inform them, keep a watch on your uh, watch, uh, watch. So, and in addition to that, let me highlight about faculty. We have around 149 faculty members, out of which 25% of the faculties are with the PhD qualifications. 25% of the faculties are with PhD qualifications. Till 33 members are being pursuing PhD in various uh, organizations, in universities and all like. So last year, let me highlight the our students are very studious. Our students have backed four university ranks in addition to three university ranks during the last two, five years. So this is an achievement of our institute, and our institute is ranked in the area that is at utter ranking institutions of innovation and achievement. That is an initiative of Ministry of Education. In addition to the IIC Institution Innovation Council, there also we have ranked. So these are all the added advantages uh, to our institute. So we have a center of excellence in EC department, mechanical department, and CNC department, with an uh, ICT Academy, Dell Academy, OU TBA, Osman University TBA, and all that so that the startups and all for the students can be started. In addition to that, we have got a very a huge, big library, wherein the area of the library is around 550 meters square. Total number of volumes available in the library will be in the range of around 24,000 plus. In addition to e journals, where we have a dedicated digital library, around 20 systems have been connected there. So, 5,000 e-resources or journals, research journals can be shared, can be utilized in the, our digital library. I request all the students to make use of that. Library is also heart of it, is heart of the education institutions and all that. So, in addition to that, one thing I would like to highlight here is, from our faculty members as well as from the students, we have got around 59 patents have been published and granted by Patent Authority of India. 59 patents have been 
uh, published in recent times. Published and that seven have been granted. So this is a very good achievement of our industry. Generally, parents look for uh, placement opportunities of their parents where the awards <coughs> select. So let me highlight that during 21 22 wherein we have around 30 companies visited to our institution. Out of that, 428 students have been placed. 428 students have been placed with a average a package of 4.83 lakhs, maximum of around 14.91 lakhs. That was the status of 21 countries. This time, already for 22 23, our placement team has achieved, started already, recorded. So, wherein we started activity, placement activities during September 15th. On September 15th, by 30th of October, which is to the extent of around 190 students of Rakhadiki places. Within a span of one month, wherein our placement team could achieve a placement record of 119. Still, we have a three to four months of time. So, where the package started with, package started with 8.5 lakhs, 7.5 lakhs for some of the companies and 5.6 lakhs and all. So, this is a very good, uh, the, I should have congratulate the placement team for doing this operation. So, in addition to that, it is, we have made it as a mandatory from the second year onwards, wherein, I think, uh, let me introduce uh, Dr. Dr. Aizaz Khan, who is a training partner for our institute. So, so generally from second year, third year and final year, all the students have to undergo, undergo placement training, which is free of cost. That means to say that from second year, third year and final year, we will going to equip them with all the placement tools into industry skills and all to meet the requirement of premium companies. So I request all the students, it is a part of our curriculum. It is a part of our curriculum along with the timetable only wherein the students have to attend it. So all the students have to make use of this. So by the end of their graduation, definitely there will not be any problem in getting the required jobs or something like that. So in addition to let me highlight the learning environment at our the campus. We have got five blocks. Each block is dedicated for each department and uh, Wi-Fi enabled campus wherein we have got a dedicated line, leash line of 100 Mbps leash line and 1 gigabytes uh, broadband line is available. So totally it's a Wi-Fi enabled campus. In addition to that we have got a medical cell also, a dedicated doctor comes here 3 days in a week. So, cafeterium, cafeteria, auditorium is there, which is all dedicated for one institute. And uh, in addition to that, total all the buildings, total uh, laboratories are being <coughs> monitored under a CCTV surveillance. Unit. So, we have around 93 cameras have been connected across the uh, campus. So, in addition to that, for girls, junior students, a dedicated anti ragging the cell, student cells like anti ranking is there, women protection cell, online grievance reduction cell, redressal cell is there. In addition to the mentoring cell, which is a part of our best practices like. So wherein for, for 19 students, one teacher wherein we have appointed. So that where whatever the problems related to their progresses, internal marks, attendance and all like, you can directly talk to the mentor. Mental wherein the phone number and all which will be given by the concerned authorities, you can directly interact with them so that once in a fortnight or once in a month you can have this. So career guidance, dedicated career guidance we have, NSSM for development and enhancement of students. In addition to thing, one thing I want to highlight for girls and boys, we have a dedicated gym for men and women for maintaining the best to this one against the institute. So this is, these are all the highlights of our institute. I don't want to take much of your time in the afternoon. So we have a tie up with some of the companies like, some of the companies like Oracle, WP, OS Corporation Technologies, IIT Madras for NPTEL courses. 
IIT Bombay spoken electric, spoken tutorials and all like these are all the MOUs to increase our uh, industry input interaction. Thank you very much. Once again, I congratulate all the students. Sure. Thank you. Madhushudan Gilada to address the gathering. Good afternoon, everyone. Nice. I see that uh, all of you have spoken back. Uh, I know it's post lunch. I hope you all had lunch uh, before coming down. I know you must all be very excited to come on the first day of your college. Your parents will be very proud of you. Uh, I am here uh, from the industry. Uh, sir wanted to meet you to talk more from the industry perspective. And that's why I am here. Uh, before I start, I would like to first uh, uh, extend the uh, pleasantries and uh, I would like to thank everyone on the DAS to uh, calling me here uh, and talking to you all young people who are just going to be entering uh, a stage where we as industry would want to be looking at you. Uh, I would like to first a few name, uh, name a few people and then thank them uh, before I start uh, talking about my experiences and uh, what we look from the industry perspective. So sir, uh, Krishna sir, uh, Prabhu sir, uh, Pradeep Reddy sir, Praveen sir, Akhil sir, thanks to all of you for welcoming me here. Uh, let me quickly start about uh, my experience. Uh, see, I'll tell you one thing. I, am, uh, I may not look like a Hyderabad person, but I just stay uh, across the road here. So I have seen this college grow. I would say that you all, uh, including your parents, uh, should be lucky that you are in one of the colleges which is in the heart of the city. There are only very few colleges which are in the heart of the city. In fact, when I did my engineering, which is in electronics, uh, I actually had to travel uh, 500 kilometers from here and stay away from my house. So you are uh, lucky people to be in the city, in a college, uh, awesome infrastructure. Uh, I think uh, we should uh, basically uh, thank sir on the DAS for that. Uh, I have done, uh, I, I don't come from an IIM, IIT background. Just to be clear, and why, I'm going to tell you why I'm saying that. It really doesn't need a I am IIT background to basically excel in life. I don't say I'm, I've touched my excellence, but then I can say that just two or three years into uh, my experience, I was leading teams from I am and IITs. So it doesn't take you a big degree, but it just needs your hard work and dedication towards work for you to basically become higher or excel in your careers. Okay. So that's uh, something which you will have to take uh, a note of for. You've done your 12th, so I know that competitive exams uh, starts from uh, 9th standard nowadays, teaching for that, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. All of us have gone through, I've written MSA, I've written ISA, I've done everything, K said everything uh, in my career. So it's not that I'm, I'm very old, uh, just about 20 years back that I, uh, 25 years back that I wrote MSA as well. So I know that for competitive exams we start writing and studying from 8th standard, 9th standard onwards, so parents push us. But you've done that, you've done that, you've completed that, you are no more into a competitive space. Till 12th, till your MSETs, you were basically working towards competing against each other to get that seat, right? You are no more competing against each other. What you really need to do in your academic studies in, as part of engineering is, Definitely learn the concepts. No more competitive stuff here. You are for yourself and you are you are not competing against each other for a job. Now why I say that is uh, I am going to talk from industry and I am going to talk very specific stuff. In 2021, the statistics said that about 8 jobs are available for every engineer coming out. Every engineer coming out had 8 jobs in the market. But that engineer should be deployable. That means that engineer should have the knowledge to take up job. That was in 2021. And in that statistics, it also said that in 2025, every deployable engineer coming out, engineer coming out, right, will have 20 jobs in hand. That means there are 20 jobs available for every good engineer coming out. So uh, do you really need to compete with each other? No. Because there are 20 jobs only for you. If you want, 
if you are deployable. So, am I loud enough? Yes. Okay, fine. Okay. I can be more louder. <laughs> okay. So, that's what I want to say. So, you're not competing with each other. That's something which you need to take care of. So, what do you need to do in engineering? You need to ensure that you are learning the concepts, whichever engineering you do. Be it civil, be it mechanical, be it equipally, be it AI, ML, whatever engineering you do, you need to understand the concepts. Because when you move from your engineering fourth year to the job market, right? Well, your companies like us are coming and talking to you. It doesn't matter what job we want to get done for you. Is it a software job, is it a mechanical job, or have you spent time understanding what was taught to you? Is important. If you know that, what it means basically means is what we teach you after that, what we deploy you for, will also be easy for you to pick up. That's something which you need to understand. So spend four years understanding concepts and practicing those concepts. Now I word the I use the word practicing. Right? So, one of the most important things that you need to take care of in your engineering is not just conceptual knowledge. You need to ensure that you put your concepts into practice. Think of a lot of internships, think of a lot of project works that you need to do. Don't just stick to the projects, project works which are related to your college uh, academic stuff. That is the 6th semester project and the 8th semester project. That's what is general engineering project work, right? Start as early as second semester or third semester. Start working for two hours with the industry folks. So that you know what you need to be doing. What is the industry looking for. So I would urge parents, in fact students as well, to start pushing students. After your 4pm college ends, go back home, rest, play, do whatever. But spend two hours from your home working for someone in the industry. Starting first, second year, semester, second year is free. Maybe third year they will start paying you if you are good enough, if you are giving them input back. Okay? So, what I am trying to say is that when we come for recruitment, right? What we look at is not what your 10th marks, 12th marks or engineering marks are. We actually look, if you put a 2 page CV or a 3 page CV, some people put 4 page CV. At 12th stand, at engineering, 4 page CV or 3 page CV doesn't actually anything. They keep writing something or other. What we look at is, what have you contributed? Not your fourth semester, fourth year engineering project or third, third year engineering project. What have you done in the industry? What have you done? Have you contributed anything to, to, to the uh, companies? Have you worked with someone in the, uh, in the industry? That gives you a bigger push in your CV than what your marks. This is a very important thing because I am talking from the industry what we look at. Not your 10th standard. Obviously your 10th standard, 12th standard engineering marks count. They, nowadays, when I was thinking shift engineering, 70-75% engineering marks were very high. Today, 85% is also less. So, engineering has become also like a commodity where it's like 12 standard, 10 standard. But engineering marks are also very high. But then, that is not what we look at. We look at what have you contributed. Uh, concepts, practice, I think uh, uh, from the concepts perspective, I think Sir has already uh, told uh, we've got uh, 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 companies are coming here, just sir is there, who would be taking you through the industry relevant concepts as well. See, one thing I am very clear about, engineering is a very good base. Industry is moving faster, academics is moving faster as well. But our base has to be strong, then our concepts on those base have to be very strong and what we have done with those concepts is what we display in our CV. If you show that, those 20 jobs will become 40 for you. People will chase you for job. people will give you extra premium in your first salary itself. That's how industry is. You saw the last years, two years with your brothers and sisters, elders, cousins. Last two years have been very good because there was shortage. Now, recession comes, not come, doesn't really matter. You guys are going to come in, out in four years, the industry will be again good. But you need to show something in your CV to do that. Don't just bank on your marks to get a job. Do something above and over that. That's something which I would want to send from a message perspective. Now before I uh, uh, go away from here, I just want to point out three, four different things. Uh, marks are important, but then practical knowledge is more important. Practical knowledge includes internships and projects. One thing which I uh, uh, got an as a advice uh, when I started off first, right, is once you come into a job, don't take my words in literal sense, but once you get into a job or even when you are doing engineering, you ask questions. Don't stop asking questions. Now don't go and bug sirs, professors, teachers asking questions for every small little thing. Ask questions to yourself. What does it make sense? 
Why should it be done this way? First you ask yourself. If you are not able to ask, answer yourself, ask your friends, ask your parents. Then you come to your professors and teachers. Everyone is here to help you. Asking questions is very important. Even now, for me, in this uh, stage of my life, even till I, 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 I take a last breath. Asking questions to us and to the to people around us is important for relevant topics. If you keep asking questions and irritating people, then people will not answer you anyways. So, but ask relevant questions. That's very important thing which I would want to add. Second, third thing is having an opinion. So we did engineering, we, we had started doing engineering because our parents wanted to do it. That's all God now. You guys are now, or guys, girls are all becoming adults now, right? So having an opinion is very important. Shaking head for everything is not going to help. But most important thing sir also said, man also said is discipline. And I think a method is, is known for discipline. So I think discipline with having an opinion is very important. Last thing, I don't want to be uh, 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 just preaching study and uh, uh, work. I would like to add that enjoy this time. This is a very good time for you. Enjoy this time, but have your target in mind. What do you want to have? Do you want to be a Google employee? Do you want to be an entrepreneur? Do you want to be a Microsoft employee? Do you want to be an Amazon employee? Do you want to be a TNT employee? Whatever it be. Have your, uh, what do you call, target in mind. Work towards that target. But enjoy this time. Engineering time won't come back. And you people are in the best place to have a, a, a good time because other colleges, most of the colleges which I have visited are at like about 30, 40, 50 kilometers from the city. You are in the center of the city. Okay? I would like to just uh, end one thing uh, with, with one statement which I would like to see if you understand well. Plan your work and work your plan. Remember these words, okay? This is very important from the perspective of your career. Plan your work and work your plan. That means you need to put a plan in place, day to day plan, weekly plan, monthly plan and then you need to follow that plan. It's very important that I have learned over time. I think you are very early, we did not get those opportunities to talk to industry people so early. I think uh, the college as well as uh, the placement teams here encourage you all to talk to industry folks early. You will get many more people talking to you but think about it. Put a plan in place. You are not just till in uh, uh, 10th or 12th, you have just come into uh, a different stage now. Uh, plan it well and start working on that plan. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for making it short but more meaningful. I think uh, all the students have got the basics, what sir wanted to tell us. Uh, concentrate, focus on the basics, ask questions, be disciplined and these are the basic things what you made a teacher's job very easy. What we teachers keep telling day in, day out in the class, I think uh, sir said the same thing. But uh, thank you so much sir. Now I invite our director sir, Professor Lakshmi Vitya to come and address the gathering. Very good afternoon, Vanada. Excellent, a warm welcome again on behalf of Methodist College of Engineering and Technology to all the parents first and the newly admitted students and all the dignitaries sitting on the dais. We have already heard from the harshest mouth that is from Mother Sudan Gilaga. Because when you are joining your works in any engineering college for that matter, not only in whether it's called of engineering or technology, what you will be looking for is what will be the future of my son or daughter. And many parents, the first question they ask when they come to college is how many companies visit your college? What will be the pay package? Will you give a guarantee that my war will be placed. So these are the questions. Even today, I am seeing young bright faces in front of me, I was observing, and worried faces of parents. Because this is their worry. Because they are spending their hard and money on their children. What is their interest? They don't get anything. Ultimately, they are interested in the future of the students. 
they would like their wants to set in life very well. If that is done, yes, they feel satisfied. And when they become old, like me, I am 72 years old, they don't expect anything from the children. If you are well set in, and if you don't depend on your parents, that is enough. Now, today, intentionally, we have invited two guests. One is the person who can answer all your queries regarding the placements. He is a recruiter. He has already answered. And the another one is the trainer. Who trains you for placements? So after my presentation, he will be tracking with you. So what are the components that go into the training and how, how well you can be trained to face the reality? Now my duty as a director is to tell you about what the college can do, how the college can help you and what we expect both from parents and students. That is my job. So as you all know, this is the best choice you have made in joining Methodist College of Engineering and Technology. I have been associated with the college for the past 12 years. And I was in the university service, retired there, straight away joined this college and I was working here. One of the best aspects of this college is you need not waste three to four hours of time of travel. You are exposed to environmental hazards and by the time they go to the college, they will be tired and they feel like sleeping, not feel like attending classes. So that problem is not there with this college. That is the best advantage you have. And then, there are many, those who are coming from districts, you may think that there are no attacks or hostels for this particular college. But in and around this campus, within a radius of half a kilometer, there are number of affordable and good hostels and the college can help you in getting your wards admitted in those hostels. And of course, regarding the faculty, already our principal had explained you, we had highly competent, committed and uh, faculty and 25% of them are having PhD and they are all constantly, they will be interested in the welfare of the students. One important aspect of this college is, the principal has already highlighted that we had about 59 patents. Now, out of these 59 patents, let me tell you, 14 patents are filed by the students of 3rd and 4th years of this particular college. That shows that we are promoting quality and innovative research. So, if you go to a company for a campus placement and you say that I have a patent and show it, your chances of getting employed are much more than when you don't have any papers. He, he talked about internships, projects. Now I am talking about papers. So these are the innovative methods that you have to evolve. Getting marks alone is not sufficient these days. Yes, you may score 95%. And another student, even if he secures 60%, he get a job and the person who is scoring 95, he will not be selected. The reasons already were explained by the earlier speaker. So getting marks is not the only thing. That is only a passport, that's all. So that gives you eligibility to attend campus placement. We can get many companies to the campus. Can we force Mr. Madhusudan Gilani to take you, get a job? No. Who can, do, who can do that? You. You must get selected. But our management can get these companies to the campus and also before getting the campus, before getting them to the campus, we are imparting training through our training partner. Earlier when we were not having autonomous status, whatever curriculum is finalized by the university, we were following literally. And there was no scope in the curriculum to include some of the courses 
which can develop the soft skills and other skills required for an engineering graduate. Now, since last year, we have become autonomous. We frame our own curriculum. So, in this, we are incorporating so many courses. First year, we are concentrating on communication skills. That is the first thing for required for all the students or for any student to get employed. Unless you express yourself, unless you talk what you know, how can anybody employ? So the first thing, first you must ask when you face the commitment, why should you be employed? I will ask this question. Why should you be employed in a particular company? If you ask this question and if you can answer this, you will be definitely selected. If you say that because I got 90% or 85%, I should be selected, no, there are no takers for that. There are so many engineering graduates who got 90%. In what way you are different from them? How you are useful to the company? What is company is looking in you? Those things you must be able to explain. Unless, why should that company employ you? Unless you are useful to the company? That is the question that you should ask. How best I can help the company? Of course, giving, company is giving salary, you are being benefited. In what your company is benefited if they offer 18.5 lakhs or 28.5 lakhs? No. Company is not benefited. You are benefited. Unless the company feels that you can deliver the goods what is expected of, they will not employ you. Even if they employ you, the packet, the pay packet will be proportional to your ability. Please remember that. So this is in the morning also I have given some examples. The same example I have to repeat, I know how, how some of these uh, have listened to that. Again I am asking you that question. How many of you, how many cricket lovers are there in this? Cricket. That is the favorite game. How many? Yes? Don't feel shy if you raise your hand. Okay. Not many. Then I will ask you another question. How many are fond of movies? Please raise your hands. Movies. Yes. Don't laugh. Who is the best music director? Yeah, Rahman. Yes. Very good. And we have so many music directors in the field. Do you know how much music Rahman charges? It will be around 15 to 20 crores. That is the latest figure. 15 crores for one movie. And there are directors who are available for a paltry amount of 5 lakhs or maximum 1 crore. Then why should 16 crores be paid to Rahman and why only 5 lakhs to other music directors? In music, the same Sarasara there is the Sattasara, Sarigama Padanisa. But still, they are prepared to pay 16 crores to Yar Rahman. Why? Value addition. He has that value which the other directors are not having. Similarly, cricketers. Virat Kohli, in IPL, he is sold for 16.5 crores or 20 crores. I don't exactly remember. And there are players who are available for 50 lakhs, 70 lakhs, 1 crore. See the difference. Same is the case with employment. Why some students can be employed with a pay package of 30 lakhs and why some people get only 3 lakhs? This is the puzzling question for all of you. Of course, give me a chance, everybody would like to get 30 lakhs. Why only 30 lakhs? 3 lakhs, why should I study? He is also studying in the same college. He is your classmate, benchmate, roommate sometimes. And he gets 30 and I get 3. Don't you feel bad for that? So instead of feeling bad, understand why some people are more valuable than others. That is what is important for you during these four years of studies. In the name of the skills and also value-added courses, our computer science department has MOUs with ICT and many companies and we have these MOUs with Cisco, Microsoft, Variety, Dell. IIT Mumbai, which offer certification programs. And the department gives training 
for all the students in these certification programs. A BE degree plus two certificates, it may be equal to 25 lakhs. And a BE degree, no certificate, three lakhs. And BE degree, without any certificate, zero. So this is how you can build up your value when you are in this college for four long years. So first year, we are going to train you. The English department is taken care. Already they have some plans for that. You will be trained in communication skills, which is very, very, very important. Because unless you speak out what you know, how can others know what you know? That is very much required. And coming to second year onwards, the other skills that are required. Because the B graduates ultimately when you join a software company, you become managers. So you should have managerial skill. Working in a group, you must be able to take everybody with you. For that it requires skills. And there are so many other soft skills. Of course, I am not going to list out all these things. But these skills will be provided by our training partner of the college. When can you acquire these skills? Only when you pay attention, pay interest, attend all the classes that are offered during these four years, yes, then you will be worth 30 lakhs. Otherwise, you may be worth 3 lakhs or 0 lakhs. The choice is worse. Whether you want to get a pay package of 30 or not. I will tell you, the highest package a student got from this college is 28.5 lakhs in Amazon. And two students got around 15 to 16 lakhs in Baidu's. And another student got 15 lakhs. But the beauty is, none of them have joined these jobs. Why? Not that they are not interested in money, but their goal is different. Their goal is to become entrepreneurs and do jobs, not take jobs. So, in this college, we are also providing through the IIC, Innovation Cell, the, what is required for innovative research and by submitting it, encouraging you to submit patents and these patents can be converted into startups. You all know, King of is coming up in Hyderabad. Even our Prime Minister is encouraging the startups. There are lots of funding available. And if you get the confidence, you, you look at the confidence level. How many of you would leave a job when 28.5 lakhs is offered to you? Can you raise your hands? Yes. I congratulate him. That should be the spirit. We must become, engineers should become job providers, not job seekers. If you cannot provide, then you seek a job. That should be the spirit with which you should work during these four years. We are there to help you. We have competent faculty. All the facilities, the management is teacher friendly and student friendly. So, take care of yourself and if you want to excel, participate in all the activities. And because another thing I want to impress upon the young brains is your parents, they have lots of hopes on you. They are spending so much of money. Why they are doing that? With the intention that you will settle your life, not that they get something back. They have no, no parent expects anything from the students, from, the, from their wards. Let me tell you. It is in your own interest. Some of the people are employees, small time employees. They don't get much, they don't earn much. In spite of that, they are spending lakhs of rupees. For Narayana Chaitanya itself, they must have to spend not less than two lakhs. Leave alone engineering. And again in engineering, Minimum 5 to 6 lakhs they have to spend. Even if you are paying the fee, they have to spend 5 to 6 lakhs. Where from they get money? So they are taking loans. And I know some of the parents are half starved. And then, why you are, they are doing this? With the interest that you will come up in life and settle in life and you have to make them proud. 
all these things can happen because now we have autonomy. Let me tell you, autonomy doesn't mean that because the college is conducting the examinations, I don't say that pass is a sure. <coughs> last year some parents were under that impression. The management will be the last management to compromise the academic standards. Luckily we have established some name in Queen Cities as far as the standards are concerned. We don't want to dilute, we don't want to compromise on these standards. Let me pass on the student, if you don't pass on your own, nobody can give you marks. No teacher can just like that give you marks. You have to pass on your own. And this year, why I am telling, some 22 students are detained in first year for want of the credits. You must secure 50% of the credits you must pass out of the total credits of first and second semester put together. They did not get it and they are free. One employee, a mother, came and she was weeping just two days back in our office. What can we do, tell me? So that's why I am cautioning all the students. Be careful. The detention system is in work in Usman University and in our college also. And another thing is discipline is very, very important because all these days you are enjoying or you are not enjoying freedom. Even parents also, I know, they don't allow you to watch TV after coming home. They say afterwards you can see, but pass, 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 I'm set and get a good rank. That is their interest. That is how you have not enjoyed. And some students now, after coming to engineering, we don't apply that much of pressure on students as is applied in corporate colleges. Because we wanted to train them as good professionals. They should learn on their own. We cannot apply pressure and we cannot force them to do a certain thing. So, therefore, what happens is they enjoy the freedom. But, enjoying freedom is all right. Have your friends circle. But look who is surrounding you. What type of friends you have. That is to be monitored by the parents. If you are surrounded by some bad elements, yes, your life will be affected. So this freedom you enjoy, but not misuse. As earlier, now even now in the corporate, corporate sector they say, meeting the deadlines is very important. You have to meet the deadline. But the days have changed. Now you have to beat the deadline, not meet the deadline. And the technology is changing very fast. Unless you are careful and expose yourself to the new technologies, you become obsolete. What is there in the curriculum? It is changing very fast. What you have learned in second year, by the time you come to fourth year, especially in subjects like CSC and IIDS, it becomes obsolete. So you must continuously update your knowledge. That means you must become self-learners or autonomous learners. You must learn on your own because each one has different goals and our teachers cannot concentrate on a particular cross-section of students who are having a particular goal because somebody is interested only in jobs. We are not training you for jobs. This college is not training you, but we are providing you an opportunity to get yourself trained if your goal is to get a product. And if your goal is to go for higher studies, you have to evolve a different path. If you want to become an entrepreneur, the path you have to travel is different. So depending upon your interest, your goal, your choice, you have to choose your path. And fortunately, this college can provide a right path for all the cross-sections of people having varied interests. That is what I can assure you as a director of this institution. So it is for you. And another thing is, attendance is compulsory. The principal has already told you. Now the government also is going to implement the biometric system. So they please take care of that. We don't want to detain any student for want of attendance. Don't force us. Don't give us a chance. You are paying the fees to attend the college and learning something. Gain knowledge. Not to the option. This is another aspect I would like to highlight. So I hope you would be
benefited during your stay of four years here. Again, I am asking you, your parents and yourself, you are investing four years of time in this college. When I invest some money, now you are investing time. Time is more precious than money. If I lose money, I can get back. I can earn. If you lose time, can you earn the time? Can you get back the time? Never. So these four years, you are investing, your parents are investing in you this time. It should be good to you. Otherwise, what happens? I know some cases, always there will be some stray cases. Don't take those examples. There may be three or four students every year, they discontinue engineering in fourth year go away. Then what will be their time? They will be again plus two. That means they will be having only intermediate degree after spending two to three years in engineering. So be careful. These four years of study, if you work hard, whatever effort you have put in plus two, extend it for another four years, then definitely you can settle in life and come out with prize in us. Whereas by enjoying the freedom that is provided in a college, if you want to enjoy these four days by spending your time with the friends, because this is centrally situated, there is another drawback. There are so many theatres, there are so many restaurants, there are so many other colleges also. So you will be carried away by these forces that surround you. But don't allow them, don't allow them, because you are all grown up children now. So this, by working hard for these four days, four years, you can settle in your life, the rest of the life is in your hands. So whether you work hard during these four years, come out with flying colors or not, who can decide? Not your parents, not your teacher, not your class, not your employer. It is you who is responsible for your future. So your destiny is in your hands. Nobody can change your destiny. You can only say, you can only say this is the path you have to follow. The teachers will advise, the TPO will advise, the mentor will advise. Can we do something to achieve that? Without your cooperation, without your involvement, nobody can help you. So please remember these things. I don't want to extend further. I will be interacting with the students afterwards during this induction program for some more time. And for passage of time, I am stopping here. And I hope you will enjoy your stay and you give me assurance that you will come out with flying colors after working hard for four years. Thank you. So, as the day proceeds, I would like to invite upon our chief guest of honor, Ms. Raijas Khan, to address the gathering.
guests, parents, and uh, dear friends, all the students. Good afternoon. Um, do you know that uh, collectively, all the speakers that came on the guys here, you've heard um, words of wisdom of a total experience of more than 100 years. So all the things that you've heard uh, actually is a is a wealth of uh, experience and wisdom. Only if you are able to apply that in your life, you'll see the difference. How many students are sitting here? How many students? Fantastic, thank you. Uh, okay, I have uh, one simple question for all of you. How many of you have joined engineering without caring about whether you wanted engineering or not? You just wanted some degree and you are not going to use engineering or this degree or any knowledge that you get in the next four years you are not going to use in the future. So how many of you have taken up just for the sake of taking it up? Anybody like that here? Okay, do we have anyone who has actually taken up engineering because you are going to use this in your life. You are going to do something meaningful from this degree or the knowledge thereof or you are going to use this degree for uh, getting a job or a career. How many of you are going to do that? Right, so most of you seem to be uh, taking up engineering because you want to create something in life out of this degree and what you learn from here. So, uh, uh, when it comes to sharing, um, what should we do? I think we have uh, some wonderful speakers and uh, what they have shared, I think if you remember 1% of that and if you are able to apply 1% of that, I think you are you're going to be a very, very successful engineer and you will have an amazing career. And I'm, I mean it, if you apply 1% of what you heard so far. Uh, what I am going to tell you is a story. Uh, but before I tell you a story, I want to uh, ask you, do you want to hear, I also have some good things and bad things to share. What will you start with? Good things or bad things? Okay, generally, I don't know why I've seen uh, most people start with bad things and I think maybe in the end they want to have the, the sweet things uh, later. Yeah, alright. Right, so I'll start with the bad news since that's what you want. So the bad news is that you've been hearing this uh, since your childhood. Your parents have been telling you, work hard for this exam, you know, after that it will be better, up to your 8th and then ninth. Once you cross ninth, just one more board, work hard, get good marks, <coughs> strong foundation and then things will be easier. Once you cross 10th, then it's about 11, 12, These, this inter is very important. Once you cross 12, then the answer exam and so on. So you keep hearing, right? And what you're told is once the exam is over and you've got a good college and then your life is set. Have you heard this? Right? So the bad news is that this is not true. It's not going to happen like that. Because whatever hard work you've done till now, you have to do more hard work now in engineering. Right? You thought 11, 12, the, those 12 to 14 hours of studies in Narayan and Chaitanya were enough, but that was just for marks. But what you heard so far is for the rest of your life. So what you're going to do now is going to impact for the rest of your life. So the, the bad news is that what you heard and you thought that engineering and the college is going to be fun, uh, no uniform, no uh, you know strictness. Uh, well, you've joined Methodist. I'm very happy that Methodist is, has a strictness as well. So the, the, what you imagined probably may not be the same. The other, uh, uh, you know, not so good news is that you must have heard about recession as well. The jobs, the market is not good. The salary packages have gone down uh, this year, next year and so on. So all this is not sounding not so good. So if this is the bad news, then what is the good news? So the good news is, it starts with the fact that today you have uh, joined engineering and uh, the first step going towards your career and professional uh, education is a 
achieved, which means you have uh, joined a professional organization, professional uh, college, and Methodist happens to be a very, very good uh, institution. You, the good news is that uh, the management and the leadership of this institution is very focused on the student's future. And they do everything, I've seen personally in the last few years, they do everything that they can to make sure that all of you, all the students, start a good career. The good news is that your HODs and faculty are, are excellent and they work very hard for the, on the same lines. And they make sure that they give you good knowledge and uh, uh, you know, academic understanding and, and, and basically create your foundation for future. The good news is that your placement department is excellent and they do whatever they can to bring excellent companies, all kinds of companies, to give you the opportunity to start your future. The good news is that the infrastructure is good and I'm, I'm, I've heard so, uh, from all the speakers that this is centrally located, you're going to save a lot of time. Now you're going to watch movies after that or uh, study, that is your choice. But yes, you will save a lot of time coming and going back from this college. So, Another good news is that uh, there's a lot of focus in this institution for skilling. And your skilling will start from the first year. Uh, when I say skilling, I, what I mean is what the industries are looking at, and you've already heard, and you've also heard from uh, Mr. Madhusudan who, uh, who uh, you know, clearly mentioned what the companies want from you, how you need to be working on that. So this institution focuses very, very hard on upskilling you. That's again the good news. The good news is that uh, um, the recession would be over by then, by the time you pass out, and you, you may again be sitting in a position where, as Mr. Madhusudan said, one, by the time you pass out, you could be, um, you know, you will have 20 uh, opportunities or 20 companies uh, lined up for you, uh, provided you have the skills, right? So there's a lot of good news. Now, I want to actually uh, just quickly take, take you through a story, uh, a very interesting, very inspiring story, which I always uh, love reading. Uh, and uh, have you heard about this person called uh, Aruna Sinha? Some of you must have seen, maybe you don't remember the name, but you must have seen some video or must have read about uh, this lady. Uh, is it okay? Shall I start the story? Yeah. All right. So, Aruna Sinha, Sinha is, uh, is from UP, a uh, place near Lucknow. And uh, she was actually a sports person. She used to love football. She was, she was a national level uh, player for uh, volleyball. She wanted to pursue her uh, career in, um, in sports and volleyball. But what happened, her, her father had passed away when she was three years old and the responsibility of the entire family was on, on her mother. And when she grew up, she wanted to take on the responsibility, share the responsibility. She had two more siblings and she decided that she should have a job because she could not pursue, uh, like we were taking example of uh, Sachin Tendulkar, not everyone becomes Sachin Tendulkar. Uh, so she decided to take up a job and she started uh, uh, pursuing these uh, opportunities in uh, these uh, paramilitary forces like BSF, CRPF, ITV, because you can also pursue your sports when you're working there. Unfortunately, she did not get any opportunity, but once she got an interview call in uh, uh, CISF, she was on the way, she hopped on uh, uh, a train, a passenger train in a general compartment, she was traveling in the night, and uh, it was overcrowded, and she was standing somewhere close to the door, and there were four or five thugs who actually uh, wanted to snatch her chain. She was wearing a gold chain gifted by her mother. That was the only expensive thing she had. And uh, she did not want to let the chain go. And she and she was a sports person, very strong, built. And she tried resisting. And nobody was there to help her. Nobody out of the entire, you know, fully crowded uh, compartment. Nobody helped her. And these people snatched the train and threw her out of the train. She fell uh, down on the tracks. Uh, from a running train and she was badly injured. She could not even move because she had broken the ribs and a lot of fractures. And it was a track, there were trains coming uh, all the time and the next train that came, her leg was on the uh, rail and the train actually cut, the, uh, cut her leg. She was lying there uh, 
which he was found the next morning by locals. 49 trains had passed and uh, uh, she lost a lot of blood. She was, uh, she was not conscious. Locals took her to the uh, railway station. She was lying on the platform for a very long time. After that, she was taken to the government hospital where she was treated in some, you know, uh, I, I mean, I don't want to get into those details, but those are very, very gory and very scary details. Then what happened, uh, finally she was taken to AIMS and she was getting treated there and when she realized what she had lost and you know, not just the leg but the, the future, the life of a sports person, all her dreams, everything was lost, she at some point she decided that she is going to do, since uh, she, her, uh, you know, God gave her life, she decided to use it for something better and she decided that she would climb Mount Everest. She had not even started walking, but she had decided that she, she was going to climb Mount Everest. And uh, she uh, connected with uh, one... Uh, Bachinder Pal. thank you. You always say me here. So, she connected with Bachinder Pal. She's the first woman uh, uh, Mount Everest uh, uh, climber. She connected with her, her and Bachinder Pal actually told her that in this situation, in this condition, if you have decided to conquer Mount Everest, the fact is that you've already done it. The only thing now you have to do is physically go there and just go to the mountain. But deciding to do something like this is actually more than enough. Then she started her training and she continued work very hard for the next one, one and a half years. And this accident happened in 2011. And in 2013, she actually climbed Mount Everest. And not just that, after that she decided that she would also climb the highest peaks of every continent. All the seven continents and she has actually done it. All the seven highest peaks of seven continents she's climbed. Today she's, uh, uh, she's got Padam Shri, she's uh, got so many other awards, she's been recognized by so many different organizations and you know, prime ministers and presidents and chief ministers and uh, globally. And she, uh, 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 she's actually, uh, she's also decided to open one organization where she wants to support uh, uh, sportsmen and she's funding it. Uh, she's also written a book, so she's also an author. And uh, uh, she's also married and has a, uh, is, you know, has a, is well settled now. So, uh, I would like to show you some pictures so you can connect. If you want, you can. Who will that be? It will depend upon you. 
So if she can, you also can. If you look at what she has done, she has done the impossible. Everyone told her that you cannot do it. When she had no leg and the situation she was in where she was dealing with life and death, everyone thought that she is just mad and she cannot do it. But she did that. Today, what you are asking, what everyone is asking you, what your parents are asking you to do, is not impossible. It's something that you just need to work hard and do it. Right? So it's not impossible. So, now, while there are a lot of things, there are a lot of approaches to look at, what I would want to bring your focus on is that the first thing that you need to do today and before you start your first year is have a goal. A goal can be any goal. You want to become an entrepreneur, you want to join Google, you want to join any other company, you want to have your own company, you want a job, you want to give jobs, it's up to you. But have a goal. Once you have a goal and you you stick to your goal, you're determined to meet your goal and you do, when I say determination, it means you just go mad in doing everything that you can and stay, stick to your goal. If you're able to do that, for that, whatever needs to be done, I'm not getting into those details because a lot of those details are already shared to you, you know, kind of things. What value are you creating? What value are you giving to, uh, uh, you know, in your area? Are you doing projects? Are you doing, uh, uh, you know, internships? Are you creating something? Are you making something, building something, right? You heard all those uh, in the past one hour. So the question is that you have to be determined to be able to make and meet your goal. The third thing is focus. A lot of times, you must have seen, uh, a lot of times you decide, okay, tomorrow I'll get up and do it, uh, tomorrow I'll get up and start my exercise and jogging and so on, but tomorrow sometime doesn't come or even if it comes, it doesn't last for too long. So can you stay focused on your goal for the next four years? is what will make a lot of difference. So if you are focused on your goal and you stay away from all the distractions, distractions can be as simple as social media, your mobile, it can be as uh, something as your uh, friends who probably don't have the same goal and they don't, have, they don't have the same focus. So stay focused on your goal and determination will take you there. And uh, in this journey, uh, as I said, you are in, you're in uh, very good hands and uh, all the people, all the from management to every single uh, faculty in the organization uh, in this college is going to be helping you. We as uh, talent show, we also support you in this endeavor to uh, get placed. Uh, so while you do this, I would also uh, like to uh, like you to keep your, uh, I'd say, keep that in mind that when you're working for this uh, success, remember there are a lot of people who have supported you, who helped you reach to here. Starting with your parents and a lot of other people in your family, uh, your teachers, your mentors, your guides, your people who have, uh, you know, probably were your seniors, sometimes your neighbors and so on. People who helped you reach here and at the same time, they will be similarly, there will be people, your parents and your teachers, most importantly, they will be helping you reach your goal. So while on this journey and when you achieve your goal, make sure that you do give them the love and the respect and the gratitude that they deserve while on the way to your success. Right? With that, I wish you all the best and uh, do well in your life and be successful. Thank you.
He obtained his PhD from Mechanical Engineering from Usman University in the field of running technology. He has around 22 years of teaching experience in various engineering colleges and 8 years of industrial experience. He received from Sir Radha Krishna Endowment Best Paper Award and he has published nearly 24 international journals and uh, 10 national journals in his credit. He has authored two books and he has got five patents. He has delivered innovative lectures and all that. So, Dr. Rajshekar would be the HOD of Mechanical Engineering Department. So, I request the concerned student and parents, please, if you have anything, you can, you can talk to the HOD. Thank you very much. Thank you. I request Dr. Navanya to come, uh, come on the day as. So, Dr. Navanya, she is the head of AIDS, uh, Artificial Intelligence and Data Science. Bachelor's and Master's degree in Computer Science. She obtained her PhD from Jain to Hyderabad. She has got 18 years of teaching experience. She has published more than 22 papers in the international journals. She is a life member of IST, member of IEEE Computer Society, ACM. She organized many national level and international conferences. So, in the in shortly in the month of December, she will be planning for two more international conferences from our department, CSC and AIDS. So, uh, this is what I want to tell. I if, so I request all these students and the parents, if you have any related queries with respect to the computer science and AIDS, you can talk to Dr. Lavanya, the chair of uh, computer science and AIDS. Thank you very much. I request to Dr. Mastanama, uh, Mr. Mastanama, Madam HOD uh, of Electrical Engineering Department, HOD of Electrical Engineering Department. She obtained Masters of Engineering in Industrial Rights and Control from Usman University and Master of Technology in Computer Science from JNTU Hyderabad. She has submitted her thesis and uh, now this is result is awaited, her PhD thesis is awaited. She has got 22 years of teaching experience. She has got uh, Indian, one Indian patent and two international patents granted to her credit. She has got, uh, uh, she has got, uh, she has published many papers in the international and national level. So, Madam will be the actual, Madam is the actual of a Tribal Engineering Department. So, the students of Tribal as well as the parents, if they want any queries or something like that. We can talk to the concerned uh, HOA that Dr. Mastanam. Now let me introduce uh, HOD of Civil Engineering Department. Please come. Dr. Bandita Nayak. She obtained her B.Tech in Civil Engineering from Biju Patnaik University of Technology, Rutkela, that is NIT, in 2005, and Ph.D. in Water Resources Engineering from National Institute of Technology, Rutkela, in 2017. She has more than 11 years of teaching experience and research experience. Yes, she is associated with very profession. Uh, she is associated with various professional organizations. Published nearly 40 research papers in the international journals in the area of water resources engineering and she was a reviewer for many reputed journals. She has three book chapters to her credit. She has guided 11 MTech students and 21 BTech students. So she is uh, HOD of the Civil Engineering Department. If you have any related questions, you can, the parents and students can ask her. Thank you very much.
and uh, coming from the Department of Mathematics, uh, I will take the privilege of introducing Dr. Swati Mathur. Swati Mathur has a rich experience of 23 years. She is a doctorate at the Dana PhD from Usmani University. Mr. Joseph has a rich experience of 20 years. Mr. Ramakrishna. Mrs. Swami. So all these five faculty deal with the mathematics subjects, what you have in the first and the second semester, including the third semester also. Mathematics 1, Mathematics 2 and Mathematics 3. Now coming to the next department, the Department of Physics. I am also from the Department of Physics. And uh, the next person from our department is Dr. Veera Madhya Rao. is having a rich experience of 23 years, has done his PhD from Usmani University and is also the controller of examinations. Next is Dr. Arun Kumar, he has done his PhD from Madras, he is having a rich experience of 8 years and next is Mrs. Sika, having an experience of 10 years and we are all under the umbrella of Lakshmi Patero sir. I stop teaching physics <laughs> trying to motivate the students. Thank you, sir. Now, now it's the chemistry department. Dr. Ravi Kumar has done his PhD from Osman University, having experience of four years. Mr. Mohan is having an experience of six years. These two faculty teach chemistry. Now coming from the department of English, Mrs. Sona Lakshmi. The faculty of English having a rich experience of 26 years. Ms. Sepsiba having experience of 21 years. Ligamoti having experience of 12 years. And A.L. Jayashree having experience of 9 years. So these four faculty teach English. Now coming for the environmental science. Now Satyash Kumar sir is going to teach environmental science. He has done his PhD from JET. Thank you. I would like to inform all the parents from tomorrow onwards for the next three days we are going to have an induction program. The program starts at 9.30 and gets minded up by 3.30. All the students are instructed to get their lunch boxes. And uh, we are going to start the class work from Monday onwards. The college timings are from 9.15. Sorry. Uh, the college timings are from 9.30 to 4.15. Now coming for the discipline is concerned, uh, we want all the students to maintain high discipline in the class as well as in the environment. In this total campus, because total campus is under CCTV surveillance, we have around 102 or 103 CC cameras placed in all the blocks and all the floors. So we want high discipline because strict action will be taken if the discipline is not maintained in the campus. Very recently for the 22-23 year, we have detailed us to, we have restricted a student from the campus what is this behavior in the campus. So we want all the students to maintain high discipline and uh, I want even the discipline to be maintained in the auditorium also and all the students are supposed to be gathered here in this particular room only from tomorrow onwards from 9.30. So we want you to come by 9.15, no late, late, late comers. Everybody has to be here by 9.15. Parents need not come, only students from tomorrow onwards for the next three days. And we are going to give the roll numbers, everything, and uh, we are going to give, uh, display the timetable by Saturday. And from Monday onwards, we are going to have a classwork. Classwork will be started. And already morning, some of the parents came saying that my son, I want to leave to some other place for 15, 20 days. Uh, we don't give any permission. Attendance is mandatory. Every student has to maintain 75 percentage of attendance. And I want all the parents, once the interval exam is done, we uh, call for a parent teachers meeting. We generally observe that the parents don't turn up for the parent teachers meeting. We request, my humble request is we want the parents to come and meet the teachers to know the performance of the student in the examination as well as their attendance details. If anybody has any doubts, you can get the doubts clear. Yeah. Uh, yesterday we got a link for the student app. Uh, yeah. Is there any such kind of app for the parents? We do form app. Once we start with the class work, we do form the parents <laughs> That is a general group that we have posted only for giving information regarding the orientation and detection program. 
Then after we make the sections, we are going to uh, form a parents group and any fee notifications, anything, we are going to post it in that particular group. So any queries from this side? So thank you very much. I request ML Murthy to present vote of thanks.